Today we'll be proving that this language, regular TM, which is the set of all Turing machines where the language of the machine is regular, is undecidable. So you may want to know whether this is possible because maybe we have some Turing machine and we want to figure out whether or not there's a simpler version of that same machine, like a DFA for example, and it turns out that this is undecidable, sadly. So how are we going to prove this? Well, what we're going to do is similar to how we proved ETM undecidable in that we'll suppose that this thing is decidable and then try to solve ATM. So suppose that regular TM is decidable. And the way I'm going to write that is decided by R. So R is a machine that will take a Turing machine and figure out whether or not it's regular or not. We're supposing that that exists. We'll show that it doesn't exist, but we'll assume that it does. Then we'll try to decide the ATM problem. So remember, ATM takes a Turing machine and an input uh, W. So remember, we got to put both of them here. So input M W, where M is a Turing machine and W is just some random string, not, not random, but it's just an arbitrary string. Well, if I feed this machine that I'm given here into the decider for regular, well, whether or not it's regular or not does not tell us anything about whether or not it accepts W specifically. So what we need to do, like before, is we need to make a brand new machine that has regular language if and only if, or the opposite of, if and only if uh, M accepts W. So the first uh, act in my uh, uh, hat of tricks is to construct or make, you don't have to say the word construct, but it's just uh, how it's usually done, M prime, which is going to take some uh, arbitrary input X, it's just some input, and what we're going to do is we're going to have the language uh, be uh, regular at the very start. And, uh, sorry, it's, it's going to be not regular at the start. And if M accepts W, then we'll, convert, we'll make this so that M prime's language is, is regular. And our favorite non-regular language ever is 0 to the N, 1 to the N. So the, the trick here is to accept just the non-regular language first and then get all the other strings for the regular language. It could be done in a different way, but that's usually how it's done. So if X is, oh, I shouldn't say two here, I should say A because it's inside step one. So here, if X is in the language zero to the N, one to the N, I'm immediately going to accept it uh, straight away. So if X, is of the form 0 to the n, 1 to the n, we're going to accept immediately, immediately. So uh, if nothing else happens, then the language of m prime is going to be the 0 to the n, 1 to the n language. Uh, but as a step b, what we're going to do is run m on w which is this is the original Turing machine and the original input, not X here. So then here, and we're going to say, and if M accepts, then what we're going to do is we're going to accept X. So this says that if nothing happens down here in step B, then we're going to have the language zero to the N, one to the N, which is not regular. But, if the string X is not of that form, it immediately goes to this step right here. And it will only be accepted if M accepts W. But notice that M on W, the W is independent of this X right here. So no matter what X I feed in, the answer of whether M running on W is going to be exactly the same. It's not going to change. If I ran M on X, then that's different. But here I'm running M on W, which is, so W is a fixed input compared to X. And so what we can get from this is that 
what, what we have the language of m prime being is going to be one of two things. It's going to be the 0 to the n, 1 to the n language. It, or it's going to be sigma star. And uh, why is it sigma star? Because if m accepts w, then that means that no matter what other x was fed in, it's going to be accepted too. So no matter what x is fed in, it's going to be accepted. So the language is sigma star. So notice that sigma star is regular and this one isn't. And that's how we actually prove that this thing is not, reg uh, is not decidable. So, uh, and notice that the difference between these two cases rides on the fact of whether M accepts W. If M does not accept W, none, no string in here is gonna be accepted. Only the ones up here are gonna be accepted. So then as step two, we're going to run the supposed decider R on that new machine that we just made. And since it's supposedly a decider, it must uh, accept or reject. If R accepts, if R accepts, then that means it is regular. So that means it's in this case right here. So if it's sigma star, that means that this step had to succeed, which means that M had to accept W here. So that means that uh, we're trying to solve the whether M accepts W problem, ATM. And so here we're, we will accept for the same reason. And if R rejects, that means we are in this original case right here, which means that this step of M on W did not succeed, which means M did not accept W by definition, and then therefore we need to reject. And you could uh, alter this machine in innumerable ways and have these be the opposite if you wanted to. There are many ways of doing it, but this is the main way of doing it. And you can also show that uh, the problem of checking whether a Turing machine's language is a context-free language is uh, not decidable either, because you can just change this to be 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the n, and you get that for free. Uh, because sigma star is also context-free, but 0 to the n, 1 to the n, 2 to the n, where n is at least 0, is not context-free. And as a final conclusion, what we can get is that since ATM is undecidable, we have that regular TM is also undecidable too. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts and comments about this proof down in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.